In today's video, we're going to take a look at the gods of Starfinder. This is a conversation that you generally wouldn't be having, religion, but we're going to have it. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games, so if that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table. So please do those things that you already know how to do, like hit that subscribe button and that like button if you want to get more videos like this from myself. Starfinder has quite a few deities or gods, if you will, in the system itself. There are 20 deities in total, ranging across the spectrum from alignment. So what I wanted to do today was give you a high level overview of each deity, what they're all about, where you can find them, and then you can decide if you want to incorporate them into your game or not. What I'm going to cover would be considered common knowledge throughout the Pact Worlds and the Vescarium, and I'll be going through them in an alphabetical order. The first one we're going to talk about is Abadar. He is represented by a golden key. Abadar is a lawful neutral god who represents civilization, commerce, wealth, and law. He likes to bring planets and civilizations together through the magic that is commerce. Abadar is patient and someone who respects shrewd business dealings. And the main centers for the worship of Abaddon are on Absalom Station, Akaton, and Versailles. Besmara is a chaotic neutral goddess of pirates. That's right, pirates have their own deity. Besmara represents herself through space piracy, space monsters, and through strife. When trade began throughout the planets of the Pact Worlds, this gave way to piracy, and many of the pirates who began attacking trade ships throughout the Pact Worlds and the Vescarium, they brought with them the goddess Besmara. She was once a minor nautical deity revered on Galorion, but with the expanse of trade and interplanetary travel, she has grown and her following has as well. She is represented by a skull and crossbones, very traditional of pirates, and her centers of worship can be found on Absalom Station, Akaton, Aposte, the Diaspora, and the Vescarium. Demoratosh is the lawful evil god of conquest, duty, and war. Unsurprisingly, this is a Vescarium god. The Vesk have always been a race of conquerors and warriors, and even though they have made peace with the Pact Worlds, for now, Demoratosh remains a pillar of Vescarium society. Demoratosh is represented by the three energy blades that can be found on the traditional Vesk melee weapon, the Doshko. His centers of worship can be found throughout the Vescarium, as well as on the planets Akaton, Castravel, and the Adari. That last one's a spaceship. Desna is known as the Song of Spheres. Desna is aloof and impulsive, and she delights in daring, spontaneity, and mystery. She is the chaotic good goddess of dreams, luck, stars, and travel. She is represented by a butterfly with stars, suns, and moons on its wings. The Devourer, or the Star Eater. This is a chaotic evil god of black holes, supernovas, and destruction might be a good choice for all you solarians out there this god symbol is a black hole tinged with red it is believed that when the universe collapses at some point in the hopefully far distant future the devourer will be the one who destroys it eloratu is a neutral god one who has been worshipped by many on various planets throughout the entire starfinder universe Eloratu's other name is Hidden Truth. This god's domains are history, magic, and secrets. Eloratu is represented by a glowing ring with magical runes on the inside. Eloratu's centers of worship are located on Octurn, Castravel, Eox, and the Adari. Hylax is the goddess of the Shirin. She is known as a lawful good goddess of diplomacy, first contact, relations before the swarm became the hive mind that they are today. The Sheeran believed that Hylax was the first of their species, the first of their mortal species, to ascend to godhood. Her centers of influence can be found on Absalom Station, Castravel, Nchak, or Leavara, and Versailles. Hylax is also represented as a Sheeran head with three stars above the head. The universe is a vast expanse of wonders. Ibra is the god of these marvels, these distant galaxies. Also known as Ibra the Inscrutable, Ibra is a neutral god of celestial bodies. 
the cosmos, and the mysteries of the universe. Ibra is represented as a circle, with an arrow and constellations inside of the circle. Their centers of worship are on the Adari, Liavara, and Verses. Ibra is also a very old god, one that is believed to have formed near the beginning of the universe, or the creation of the universe. Iomede is the spirit of Galorion. She is a lawful good goddess of honorable battles, humanity, justice, and valor. Iomede was born on Galorion, centuries before the Gap. It was during that time that she had ascended to godhood, and when humans left the planet Galorion, the place of their birth, to search out new worlds and explore in the stars, they brought her with them. She is represented with a long sword surrounded by a sunburst pattern, and her centers of worship are on Absalom Station, Akaton, Triaxis, and the Vescarium. Lao Shu Po is the neutral evil goddess of assassins, rats, thieves, and spies. Legend goes that long ago Lao Shu Po was just a simple rat, one who sustained herself, luckily or unluckily, on a dead god, and in doing so, gained some dark powers from the deity. Her symbol is a curled and sickly looking rat, and her centers of worship are on Absalom Station, Akaton, and the Diaspora. Before we get to one of my favorite gods coming up, I just wanted to give you that mid-video reminder to hit that subscribe button. And if you're finding value out of the video today, hit that like button as well, as that does help with the YouTube algorithm. Tell me in the comments below which god I've talked about thus far is your favorite. Nyarlathotep is the crawling chaos. He is the chaotic evil god of conspiracies, dangerous secrets, and forbidden magics. He only has one place of worship, and that is on Octurn, and his symbol is represented by an inverted Ankh. Narlathotep is said to possess thousands of different forms. Narlathotep is one of the old gods, one that predates the creation of the universe. He is considered to be one of the outer gods, and I will do a video on those later if there is enough of those, but think Eldritch Horrors. Oras is the agent of change. He is the chaotic god of adaptation, evolution, and natural selection. Represented by a double helix, his places of worship are on Brethida, Castravel, and Leovara. Phrasma, the neutral goddess of death, birth, fate, and prophecy. Represented by a comet spiral, Phrasma is the first god you see when you die. In her realm, the Boneyard, you will be judged based off of the life you have lived. Her centers of worship are on Absalom Station, Aposte, and Eox. Serenae, or the Dawnflower, is the neutral good goddess of healing, redemption, and the sun. Aeons ago, Serenae visited the world of Galorion and brought with her the truth and the light of the sun. She is represented as an angel with flaming wings. Her centers of worship are on Absalom Station, Abalon, the Sun and Verses, Talavet, or the Storyteller, is the lawful neutral goddess of community, self-reliance, and tradition. Kasathis are a people who rely heavily on tradition, and their goddess Talavet is no different. Her symbol is an ancient Kasathan sigil, which represents community. Her places of worship are on Akaton, Brithida, the Idari, Triaxis, and the Vescarium. Triune, also known as the All Code, is the neutral god of computers, machine intelligence, and the Drift. I have done a deep dive on Triune and the Drift, and if you're interested in that, then please check out in the links below for the video around that. Ergothoa is the neutral evil goddess of disease, gluttony, and undeath. The only center of worship for Ergothoa is on Eox, unsurprising. Her symbol is the skull-backed fly, or the Death's Head Moth. The legend of Ergothoa is that she was once a mortal who had such a hunger for life that she refused to be judged by Phrasma. And as such, she escaped the judgment for Phrasma coming back to the world of the living, bringing with her the undeath, and of course, upsetting the natural order of things. Weidan is the chaotic good god of discovery, equality, exploration, and freedom. 
His symbol is represented by a starship heading into the unknown. While gods like Yamade and Urgothoa started out as mortals and ascended to godhood, Weidan kind of takes the opposite approach to this. Weidan's centers of influence are on Absalom Station, the Adari, the Diaspora, and Verses. Yaresa is the neutral good goddess of knowledge, mental perfection, scholarship, and science. Yaresa teaches that the core of sentience is learning to improve oneself, not only through education, but also through experimentation. Her symbol is represented as an atom with a brain as the nucleus. Her places of worship are Abalon, Absalom Station, Brithida, and Castravel. Zonkathun is the lawful evil god of darkness, envy, pain, and loss, represented with a skull with chains coming through its eye sockets. Zonkathun was known by a different name many millennia ago. He was known as Daubral. He was the half-brother to the goddess of love and beauty, and his jealousy of her talents led him to seek out dark forces that changed him, and he became Zonkathun. Zonkathun's centers of worship are on Akaton, Aposte, the Diaspora, Eox, and Verses. With these 20 core gods, I feel like there is so much here that you can work with with any character that you want to build. If you're the type of person who likes to incorporate gods for your campaigns, your stories, have the parties make deals with them to further your plot devices, there is lots here to work with. Now, please keep in mind, this was only the core 20. There are other lesser gods that are listed in the core rulebook. There are other outer gods who are more eldritch horror, we'll call them. At the time of the recording of this video, there hasn't been a book from Paizo that specifically covers the gods, the religions, and magics, but there hasn't been something specifically devoted to Starfinder's Pantheon yet. I think including some kind of eldritch horror or some Cthulhu-esque giant god or an old one coming back to life and just destroying the universe as we know it makes for an interesting story. Don't do this at level one, but uh, just some ideas for high level play. Up on the screen, you will see a playlist for other Starfinder Pact World related items. So please check those out. YouTube will have made a recommendation for you. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by everyone.